the familiar sight of a space shuttle poised on the launch pad. But look closer. This is not Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It's the California coast. This launch pad is less than 350 miles from Sacramento, and these pictures were taken just months before the Challenger disaster. NASA and the Air Force were preparing to launch space shuttles from California's Vandenberg Air Force Base. And there were going to be just as many flights out of California as there was going to be out of Florida. And so we were all excited. In Sacramento, John Powell had started a small aerospace company that looked to prosper from the West Coast shuttle launches. Obviously a major malfunction. But when the Challenger exploded, contracts were canceled, even as the tragedy was playing out on live TV. Literally, the money got pulled out of the bank before the last part hit the ground. From the West Coast, rockets can be launched into a polar orbit without flying over populated areas. It's harder to do that from Kennedy Space Center. The crew for the first West Coast shuttle launch had already been picked. And lift off. But the Challenger disaster ended the plans to launch shuttles from the West Coast. NASA and the Air Force were in no mood to risk the lives of astronauts, where an unmanned rocket could do the job of putting a satellite into polar orbit. Let's go ahead and do balloon fill. Now, 25 years later, John Powell's aerospace company flies payloads and experiments to the edge of space under helium balloons, but relies on volunteers, not government contracts. It's more fun doing it that way. We've never looked back. We have ignition of the main engines. And at Vandenberg Air Force Base, just last week, the largest rocket ever launched on the West Coast blasted off from the very pad where space shuttles almost flew into orbit from California. This marks the first West Coast Delta IV heavy launch.